working on a hood. We got one person watching. Whoever that is, thank you for joining in. I appreciate it. The reason I'm going live today, I actually did a live video on block sanding fenders. Let's go ahead and look at those. So yesterday I was live and I did a live video on how to block sand primer properly for paint. And I used the fenders as an example. And I also showed you where you would find imperfections, such as this one right here. We had another small Danner imperfection here. Um, on this fender, you can see right here where we had all this action going on. And I showed you how to uh block it properly there's a right there look at that one so i thought these would be paint ready because i've already done body work to these things like three times but when you block sand um when you when you prime them and you block sand them and all this other shit you're always going to find an imperfection until probably the third or fourth time which we went to these and that's where we found all of the minor stuff like this right here um i also did the doors the same way and i showed you how to block sand doors and you can see we really had a big problem right here and on this door as well same thing that was really weird because like i said i've done the body work to all these things extremely uh perfectionist body work same with the car now, I've already blocked sand of the car. I've already went over it several times, and the car is now in its final primer. It is paint-ready primer. But I had to get all these little parts done. So yesterday, I showed you how to block sand that using the blocks of choice. Okay, uh, here's another one. Here's one. So I showed you what blocks to use, how to block sand your primer for paint-ready primer. But I was in the middle of block sanding this hood and we found some major damage, okay? So I thought to myself, well, why don't I get online and I will show everybody how to actually apply Bondo to a primered surface, the right, correct way to do it. And there's a few steps that you gotta take to ensure that the Bondo or body fill or whatever you use is applied properly so it doesn't peel off or get moisture underneath it. So you can see I've already sanded this, but I kind of want to just lightly go over what's going on. And then once we see the situation, we'll move forward with the Bondo. Let me go ahead and put the camera up here like this. I hope everybody's doing great out there. Once again, this is actually part two of the live video that I made yesterday. Um, so I wanted to, I, I wanted to uh, show everybody, you know, when you find damage after you've already primed it and you think it's ready for paint, but you find out, well, it's not ready for paint. We got situations. I thought I'd come back on here and I'll show you. Uh, how to fix those because sometimes when you do this you you really get depressed because you've done so much work to it and you've done so much labor and, and cost materials and then it seems like what the fuck you know i did all this work to it i've done all the body work to it and another thing i'm going to tell you about this hood this is actually a brand new hood it's not an oem factory nos hood it's an aftermarket brand new hood now, I've already done body work to this brand new hood. I've already done body work. But as I was block sanding it, and I want to show you that, let me get my monitor up to make sure we're in the right situation here. Um, okay, let me uh, do this. Okay, so we got DIY auto school. Let me get my monitor up, and then we'll go forward. Because I want to make sure that we're in the picture here. And the only way to do that is I got to use Minnie's phone. So we got a couple people watching. Let's go ahead and say, hey, how you doing? We got Brandon, Kenneth Hill, uh, 709er. How you doing, Jake? Cregan, Eddie, 
Slavic uh, Perkoski. We got Eddie from Belgium. I'm sure Slavko's from uh, another country as well. We got Robert. How you doing, Robert? Uh, Jonathan Korea and uh, 88 Cantina 600. So everybody's here. Uh, and we just we got Reverend Tacos, Mark Cazell, Nico, Cars and More. And uh, we just got them coming in. And I appreciate everybody's support here. Uh, Cowboys, Mikhail Nielsen, uh, and on and on. How you doing, Mikhail? I think this is our buddy Mike out in Canada. If it is, give me a thumbs up. Um, I took a guy named Mikhail. I called him uh, Russian Mike. Uh, so I think that might be him. I don't know if it is or not, but, uh, if that is him, we went to the mines and, uh, I showed him around. So, okay. So let's, uh, go ahead. And I see that I'm in the picture here. Let's go ahead and continue with what we're doing. So what I got here, I got my broom. This is very important to have when you're block sanding. I went through that yesterday. Um, and then of course I got my long block. And what we're doing, we are block sanding this with 180 grit. I went over that yesterday in the live video, but today we're going to go ahead and uh, this will be actually part two of this. So what I've done is I'm over here block sanding, and as you can see, I got a guide coat. Okay, this is a guide coat up here that I put on here. A lot of people like to use that dust, that guide coat powder. I don't like that stuff. Uh, what I use for a guide coat, I'm going to show you, is I use this right here. It's Project Paint. Uh, this used to be like 69 cents a can over at Home Depot. I believe it's like $1.25 or $1.50 now. Uh, it's flat black, not gloss black, and it dries super fast. So I just put a dust coat on there. That's all you need, but you need a guide coat. You have got to have a guide coat. This is what I use right here. Um, I don't like that powder. I don't like the, uh, the pounce pad. That's a lot of cost and a lot of money. Why would you want to do that when you can do what I'm doing for 89 cents to $1.25? Okay, let's move down the line. So as I'm block sanding, I'm using my 180 and I'm watching and feeling. When you're using a good block, you can literally feel a situation going on on your panel, all right? But you got to have a high-tech block. So we're over here sanding, and all of a sudden, I start seeing little imperfections that I can't get out. And you can see that I really sanded it. This is bare metal right here. Here's another spot that's getting ready to be bare metal. So you can see that I really have been sanding it and trying to let the 2K high-tech filler primer do the job, but then when I rub my hand on it, I notice, no, it ain't gonna work. There's an imperfection here, and there's another one here. So we got two of them right here, and I'm gonna get a close up and show you that. And then I started sanding over here in the center of the hood, and with the block that I'm using, um, I can actually feel the dent. I can feel the dent. And if we look right here, here's a high spot. That means that I am going down to bare metal because there's a low spot right here. So I took my hand and I went over here and sure enough, the whole center of this hood is low. Okay, now we didn't notice that. We didn't notice that on the first go around the primer because it had the black primer on it. We blocked it down. We did what we had to do. We fixed the minor dents that we saw. We moved forward and this is where we have came to. I continued to block my hood out, and as I was over here, I noticed there was a big dent right here in this corner. And then, as I blocked it, using my guide coat, I noticed there was a ding, ding, ding. There's three dings right in a row right here. Now, when you first start working your panel, you're not going to be able to feel all this stuff, okay? This is why it's important that you've got to use a proper block sander and you've got to use a guide coat. Okay, so we got to the point where we have found our damage. 
Let's go ahead and move forward. And uh, we got a guy named uh, Mean Kenny, Kenneth Hill out there. He uh, opened a little shop, I believe, in Kentucky. I don't remember where it is. But we want to wish him the best of luck. So pay attention here, Mean Kenny, and uh, we'll get you down the road making some money in your shop. Um, this is a low spot, people. Here's another low spot. Do you see the guide coat? Look at it. Okay? When I rub my hand across it, I can feel it now. Believe it or not, once you see it, all of a sudden your hand reacts and you can feel it. That dent that I'm feeling right here and here is approximately this big. This one is approximately that big, okay? This was our worst part of the hood. Now, I don't know how this happened. I will go ahead and explain to you that I have had this hood in my possession for eight years. We bought it brand new. This is a brand new, never used hood. I believe this hood is probably 10 years old. It's an aftermarket hood. We bought it for our Frankenstein Rustang. Um, the owner fell into a disposition of a situation where we had to store the car and we have been storing this hood for a very long time. So, you know, the hood's been here for a while. So after I used my guide coat right in this area here, we can see, look how dark that is. I mean, that's just, that dip is very, very big. We come over here and you can see this one here. I mean, you can see I have sanded this down. That is definitely a big dent. And then, like I said, there's one right there. There's another one there. And then there's one there. So these are like little hail dings. I would never have found those if I did not use a guide coat, people. It is very crucial to do a laser straight, accurate block sand job that you have to use your guide coat. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. Now that we see the damage and we know what's going on, let's move forward and um, go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and move this right here, just like that. And actually, you know what? Uh, the biggest damage is in the center. Let's go ahead and concentrate on that. And I'm going to have to move the camera back over here because I'm left-handed. And if I do it on that angle, um, I will actually be in the camera and we don't want to be in the camera. We don't want our body like this and you're not watching what I'm doing like a lot of YouTube videos actually do. So what we're gonna do to move forward and apply Bondo, cause that's a big dent, okay? I cannot pull that out with my, if I pull this out with my dent puller in any way whatsoever, it will warp the hood. All right, the only way to fix this type of damage is you have to add to it. You cannot pull those dents out because you will create tin canning, you will create high spots, low spots, and by the time you get done, you might as well go buy another hood. So what we're gonna do is this is a piece of 36 grit. Let me look at my monitor, okay? I'm still in the picture here, good. So we're taking a piece of 36 grit sandpaper and I am going to scuff my surface up until the guide coat is gone. I'm going to override the dent itself. You see what I'm doing here? I'm overriding that approximately two inches from where the original dent is. That's about two inches. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat my process here. And yes, I am using my hand on this. I am using my hand. I tell you not to hand sand, but this is not a finished product. So we are using our hand to get this surface very rough. Okay? And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and sand this spot here. Okay, we're in the camera still. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get this action here, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this one too. And I don't know if you can see over here. Let's look in the camera. Okay, so we are in good action here. Okay, uh, we can't see this, but I'm going to go ahead and prep these up. I guess I can stand right here. So I'm going to go ahead and prep this one up here. I'm going to go ahead and prep this one up here. And I'm going to prep this one too. Just like that. And then there's a big dent over here. I don't know if it's in the camera. I'm going to go ahead and repeat my process right here on the edge. Now, once again, I have, I have to use filler on this. I cannot pull that out. If I pull that out, it is going to warp all this section. We do not want that, okay? We don't want that. So what we just did is we prepped our surface. We prepped our surface the most accurate and precise way that we can. You can see the difference in the finish. You can see that this is super rough versus this is nice and shiny. And that, what I just showed you, that's how you prep the surface if you have to add Bondo or any type of body filler to a prime surface, primer surface. So let's go ahead and go over to our Bondo table and then we'll take it from there. Once again, this is like part two. We're going to go ahead and say this is part two of yesterday. And um, it was a very long, extensive video yesterday. I didn't really have time to go into the technicalities. Okay, so that's a good angle right there. Let's get it up here. There we go. Actually, it was better the other way, just like that. All right. All right, so I hope everybody's having a nice day today on this beautiful Thursday in Moab, Utah. The weather is awesome. It's approximately 68 degrees outside, and it's very beautiful. What we're going to do to get our Bondo prepped, and I am in the camera. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my spreaders. Now, I don't know what kind of spreader you use, and you might be that smart mouth that says, he's using stupid spreaders. This is my theory on spreaders. If you learn how to spread Bondo with this, and you're good at it, then stick with it, because that's the spreader that's going to work for you. If you uh, use a screwdriver to spread your Bondo, and that's how you learn to do it, then fucking do it. I might say that's stupid. That's dumb to use that to spread Bondo with. But you might have been doing that for 35, 45, 50 years, and that's the best fucking tool you ever got. So what I spend my Bondo with, what I spread it with, is my business and works for me. So let's get back to the situation. Another thing is I use cardboard for my pallets, okay? I don't care what anybody says. I don't give a shit about the uh, a teacher at the tech school that's telling you not to use cardboard. All right, I've been using cardboard a very fucking long time. All right, this is part of our lesson here, people. We're gonna take our Bondo. Now, I've already got it prepped. Okay, we're gonna take our Bondo just like this. And this is not the most high-tech Bondo. This is not the $180 gallon of Bondo. This is $14 a fucking gallon. It does the same exact identical thing as the Evercoat gold and, and all this other bullshit. It's the same crap. I don't care what anybody says. But what we're going to do to make sure that this adheres to the hood where we are going to apply it and also flow out, we are going to take our Evercoat plastic honey and we're not going to add a lot. I want to show you this. 
That's all you need right there. The way that you use your plastic honey is on, is considered uh, by the weather that you are working with. If it's real cold, then you're going to add more. If it's hot, you're going to add less. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our hardener, of course, and then we're going to go ahead and add our hardener according to the weather, not what the can says. Anybody that reads the can and says, okay, you need one drop of hardener to, to uh, three ounces of Bondo, and then you try to calculate, that's stupid. That's fucking dumb. Uh, you're an idiot for even trying to do that. You know, practice makes perfect. Okay, people, if it's hot out, you're going to use less hardener. If it's cold out, you're going to use more hardener. Okay? Don't be a dumbass and read the can and says, one drop of hardener for six ounces of Bondo. That's fucking dumb, okay? And there's actually people out there that are going to teach you to do it that way. So you believe what you fucking want. I don't give a shit. That's your business, just like the spreaders. But my friend Pete's telling you the fucking real deal here, guys. Let's get in there. Let's get this on there. And let's get her fucking done. Okay, here we are right here. We're back over at the hood. We're going to work on our hood. Our hood has got to be a beautiful hood, people. We've got to have this hood looking awesome. We want to win some trophies. Okay, we want to go to the car show, and we want to be the winner. We want to get first place, and that's what my friend Pete um, wants. He wants a first place show car winner, okay? We got the hood in the picture. Let's make sure of that. All right, I see a pic, there we go. Okay, I'm moving it. Okay, now, we got our Bondo. Now, it's very important that you have to add some plastic honey to it. Believe it or not, when you add that plastic honey, it gives it an extra, what can I say, gripping power to grip. The main reason we're using 36 grit is because it leaves very coarse very coarse uh, action where you sanded it, and the Bondo will get inside those cracks and crevices and grip really strong. Um, one more thing I wanna go over. You don't have to worry about wearing rubber gloves on this. Somebody might say, he ain't wearing rubber gloves. He's getting grease and oil all over that. No, I ain't fucking doing that, guy. I'm not fucking doing that. Look at my hands. They're dry, okay? I didn't just wipe my ass and flush the toilet. Let's get back to business. We got our Bondo. We're going to mix it up, and the way we're going to mix that is pretty typical, is we are going to make sure that everything is mixed and uniform into one color. All right? Now, another thing is if it's warm out, if it's hot, don't be dicking around. You've got to get it done. All right, don't be slopping it. Don't be, you know, taking your time and acting like a fucking couch potato. You've got, once it mixes up, you have got to get it on the spot where it needs to go, the damage. You see it's mixed up. We're going to take it. Now, look how I'm doing that. Okay, I am curving my Bondo spreader. I am filling the center in, and I am feathering it out on the edges, okay? I'm feathering it out, there you go, look at that. Now I'm using it flat, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and put some more in the center here because the center is, and we wanna overfill it, okay? It looks like I'm putting a lot of Bondo on here, which I am, I'm not gonna bullshit you, because I want to try to do this in a two stroke action. That means I only want to put filler on it twice. So I'm using the light coming in and I'm looking at it and I'm watching it and I'm seeing that there's still a dip there and there's a little bit of a dip here. Now we're going to go ahead and get these ones. I'm curving my spreader. Do you see that? So I can fill in the center. 
All right, that's how I do it, and that's how I feel comfortable with it. Okay, and I'm feathering the edges out around it. My bondo's starting to get a little hard. Let me get this one going. Once again, I'm overfilling it. And then these three here, we're not going to do shit with right now. We're not going to do nothing. Okay. So we're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, we're going to go in the other room and have a little conversation. And uh, talk for a few minutes while we're letting that cure. So one thing about mixing Bondo, I want to go over this, is you got to mix it where it's going to cure properly. Now, as you notice, that's got a good glaze to it. The reason that's got a nice glaze and you can see it settling is because I added my honey. Very important when you are applying uh, Bondo to a primer surface. You've got to add a little bit of honey. The honey will actually make it grip better. All right, and there's that big dent. Look at the light. Watch the light. You can kind of see a little, right there, there's a little bit of a low spot. That's where the dent might have been, or that might be a high spot, and the dent's over here, and that's a low spot, and the dent's a high spot. But you can kind of see, look what I did here. Follow the light. You want to use your light. See how I'm using that light, people? Look at that. Okay, I'm using my light to find the low spots. And you can see there's no low spots it looks like it's all pretty much level, so we're in good shape. So while that's drying, let's go over here. Um, I want to tell everybody I've been working on the Baja. Um, I've only put 90 miles on this thing since I've had it road ready, but uh, I had to pull the engine out of it last night. Um, the reason I had to pull the engine out is because the flywheel is fucked. So let's go ahead and pull this around. And we're going to go ahead and look at it. And I don't want to drip oil on my floor. So we got to be careful as we move. There we go. So I had to pull the engine out because I had to order a flywheel. And you can see right here, it's just totally fucked. And the starter that I put inside it, that's a brand new starter, cost $250. And I don't want to ruin it. Now, I'm going to have to end up probably rebuilding this motor. The motor is completely worn out. Uh, the power on this motor, it, it ain't got no power. It's, it's pretty much uh, a dog dog deal and uh, just beat to shit. Um, I thought that motor was rebuilt, but it hasn't been rebuilt. There's no way that this engine was rebuilt. Um, and I'm speculating that uh, we have stock heads on it. I don't even think the heads are high performance. Um, now, we claim that this is a 17, no, a 1956 cc. It's got 90.5s pistons with a 67 millimeter crank or a 78, I'm sorry, a 78 millimeter crank. I, I just don't see it, people. I just really don't see it. So, yeah. Um, we've done a lot of work to this thing, by the way, just to let everybody know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody how much I've spent on this car already. Uh, I hope you're sitting down. Um, I really shouldn't be saying it, but what you're looking at is um, $13,000 is what I've already spent on this vehicle right here. And as you can see, now I'm spending more money, so... Yeah, one of these days it's going to be a running and driving car. And I want to go ahead and thank everybody that has contributed to the Money Pit. You can see I got my sticker on here. We got names of people that has donated. And that's not all the names. That's not all the names. That's just a few of them. Um, we ran out of room on the car, of course, and also... Uh, I had the sticker made after other people uh, bought my artwork. So, yeah, the money pit's coming along, and it's looking really, really good. The problem is, looks don't make the fucking thing run. So, yeah, somebody just said 13000 with a question mark. Yes, I've already spent. That's not my fucking labor. That's just what I've had to do to it. Unbelievable. 
Unfucking believable. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, that's still still wet. So um, we're gonna have to wait even longer now. Uh, this really sucks because I thought I'd be able to go ahead and and start working on this and get it done, but it looks like. Uh, we're going to have to go ahead and put our camera up here like that. And then what we'll do is we'll prep up our block sanders um, on getting this blocked out. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Um, to apply Bondo to primer serves we basically already went over the situation people we've already went over on what you have to do to prep it up to actually apply the bondo to the primer to make it work now the way that we are going to um sand that bondo down and i was going to go ahead and use these blocks but i'm not going to is we're going to come over here and what we're going to do, because we want to make sure that we sand these down properly, um, we're going to go ahead and use this block, I believe, and that other little one there. Um, and are we still in the picture here? Let's go ahead and see. Yes, we are. Okay. All right. So what I got here, I got a couple blocks. And whatever block you use for body work, that's the block that you need to stick with. Um, and you can see I use a lot of different blocks, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this block here and over here on the side of my toolbox, I actually have a roll of 36 grit. Now, if you want to learn what sandpaper my friend Pete uses, um, I'm getting ready to post a video on the brand that I use, which is, it's very, very good sandpaper. It's very high quality. And the real kicker is it's money saving sandpaper. So if you want to learn how to save money and have uh, sandpaper that really works good, stick with my friend Pete and uh, watch the video coming up. So what we're gonna do to block sand that, we're gonna use our high tech R and H, I believe this is R and H products. Uh, I've had a few questions on these. They don't make these anymore. I believe the company has went out of business, but you can actually get on eBay or do your research and you can find some reproduction blocks of these that are made with wood instead of plastic. So just, uh, yeah, do your research and you can find the stuff you need. But I was lucky enough to actually pick these things up. And even if you get on eBay, you might be able to find some used ones. But uh, the thing is, when you come across a sanding block that you like to use, stick with it. The same with your Bondo spreader action. Okay, so I got my blocks ready. Let's go ahead and check our Bondo, see if it's dry yet, and if we can go ahead and do this. All right, it looks like it's drying. It's still not dry enough, people. It's still not dry enough. So what we're gonna have to do is wait around. We will have to wait for the situation and hopefully it will hurry up and dry. Cause I, I kind of wanted to go through a little bit of the sanding process with you and show you what the situation was but you know what while that's drying what we can do is we can go ahead and fill these three holes right here and i can show you how to do that these three little small imperfections And to do that, we're actually going to use a different product. We are going to use a polyester uh, finishing glaze. This is finishing glaze. 
And that's how we're going to fill these little, I call them hail dings. They're not hail dings, but that's what I call them. So you can kind of get a reference of what it is. So we're going to go ahead and use this to um, fill these other ones in. We're not going to use Bondo. And I don't know about you, but I, t I tend to mix too much Bondo most of the time. Um, I don't know why it is, but I do. And that kind of sucks because when you mix too much, and you can see I mixed way too much here. Look at this. Uh, you really actually waste it. But there's nothing else we could do but do what we got to do. How are we looking over here? Okay, that's almost dry. By the time we get this done and bullshit around a little more and chit-chat, we'll uh, be able to start sanding that. <clears throat> now, when you use 36 grit to sand your Bondo down, you got to really be careful. Look how I'm doing that. I'm doing it in a, do you see how I'm doing that? A circular motion, okay? Because all I really want to do is just fill that ding in and then feather it out. And I can also see that I need to get me a new Bondo spreader. This one here is worn out. It's not really spreading smooth like I want it to, but it'll work. So we'll be throwing this thing away when we're done with it. I try to use my Bondo spreaders to the extent of you can't use them no more. And that's basically where this one is. Once again, when you put your body filler on it, whatever you're using, always fill the center of a, your little dent or your big dent, uh, overfill it, okay? Um, there's gonna be people out there that are gonna tell you, add five or six coats to it and put thin layers of Bondo on it. Bullshit, you don't need to do that, all right? So there's those right there, and that's what you would do on small imperfections when you block it out and you find them, you would use this product right here instead of our Bondo. So let me get this off of here. And now we gotta let those dry. And let me go ahead and tell you what I had to do to this hood um, to make it work. I literally, I believe, let me see here, which side was it? Okay, on this side over here, I literally had to take almost a quarter inch, well, I would say three sixteenths of an inch out of the hood and then roll that lip back over. And then I think over here, I don't think I had to do anything to this side. This side lined up great, but on that side over there, and this is real common on these aftermarket panels, is to make this line up right where it had the body lines on both sides, I literally had to remove, I had to remove material off of that hood. Um, like we saw in part one yesterday where I had to do the, uh... okay, looky there guys, enough bullshit and let's get to work. Now, when you block sand this, you want to catch it just at the right time. You want to catch it where it's hard, but it's still a little bit soft. When you start sanding this using that uh, honey, what's going to happen, it's going to have a glaze on top. It's going to have a glaze on the top. You've got to remove that glaze. And this is where our 36 comes in. But if you catch it just at the right time, then it'll sand with ease. And, and you don't want to use, when you get to this stage of restoring your car, you don't want to use power tools. You want to, all the sanding that you want to do, you want to do with hand sanding. So make sure that you stay away from the power tool action. But if you have to use it, I'm going to show you I'm going to give you an example of how to use a sander on this type of problem. So you can see by using the 36 grit, we're really breaking it down. Look at that. All right, so that's, that's the example that I would tell you to do. 
But if you want to speed things up and you think you got the balls to actually do it the proper way, let me show you what you can do to literally break down that glaze to get it rolling better. Hang on one second, I gotta get the tool. So like I said, I suggest that you do it by hand and you just kind of work your way into getting it done. But if you are good and accurate with air tools, what you're going to use is this right here. And that is a six inch DA sander. Now that sander there is a precise sander. That's not a cheapo sander that you're going to buy over at Home Depot or Lowe's, okay? That's a sander that probably cost back in the day $250. So the way we're going to do this with a DA sander, and all we're going to do is remove the glaze. I got 36 grit paper. And I'm going to go ahead and use my dust mask on this. And we're going to go ahead and use the DA sander just to break the glaze down and get rid of some of the overfill. That's all we're going to do. did we took our DA sander and we went ahead and busted that glaze down do you see how I did that and now we can go ahead and finish it by hand I actually recommend doing it with just the hand sander but if you want to speed things up you can do it just like I did so we're almost done with our lesson here you can see that the Bondo adhered to the primer and it did not peel off you can see that it's on there strong and secure and now what we'll do we will hand sand this just like that And I'm actually going to go to a bigger block. I want to use a bigger block on that to get a better stroke on it. So let me get it out real quick. Just hang on a second. Hang on one second. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and use our Hutchins speed file. This is called a Hutchins speed file. And normally I would have Minnie out here holding the hood. You can see that it might take two people. So we're gonna go ahead and try to do this without her. And by using that speed file, you can see it's really breaking it down. Now you can tell that it's breaking it down good when you start seeing uh, when you start seeing the primer getting removed past where you put the filler. Do you see what I'm saying? That feels better, but I can feel that I'm still gonna have to add more into it. So what we've done, we went ahead and applied our Bondo, our body filler to our primer, and it adhered to it very well, you can see that. And then I will repeat my process on all of the dents that you're looking at that I missed until I get them right. But the real trick is prepping the primer so you can actually apply the filler. And by using the 36 grit, it gave us the opportunity to get a grip of what we need done to do the job right. So I'm gonna go over these, it's gonna take me a while. I'll have to refill this center up one more time. And then over here, we had those imperfections. And I'll just continue to block sand them out using a block, not using my hand. And you can see them disappearing as I'm sanding. can see that look at it there it goes and you can still see that there's a low spot here because we got bare metal here here and here so that's telling me there's still a low spot but that's basically how you do what I just explained to you. Now, let's go ahead and go over these and then we're done. So on these small imperfections like you see right here, the first thing I wanna do, I wanna take my 36 grit. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. And that feels really nice. But what we do here on these, okay, is we're not gonna use 36 grit. We're gonna go ahead and take that off. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and use a dip block. We're gonna go ahead and use 80 grit. We're gonna go ahead and get some 80 grit. And I need to clean this block so I don't know if the paper's gonna to stick to it. 
But we're going to use 80 grit on our polyester filler. We're not going to use 36. And you can see, there it goes. Look at that. So we're using 80 grit on the polyester filler, the glaze, whereas we're starting out with 36 grit. You see that? Look at that. All right, and yes, this hood will have to be primed again. But as you can see, I just got rid of those using the glazing putty on top of our primer. The real trick is, is you got to prep it right. You have to prep your surface the proper way so you can apply the Bondo to the primer. So I got several hours of work ahead of me just to get this hood in shape. And it's gonna take a while. This is not a quickie fix by no means. This is a time consuming type of job. And another thing that I'm gonna mention, somebody might say, well, why didn't you just grind it down to bare metal? Because when you use on a hood, when you use grinders, and you start using air tools and high speed uh, uh, tools to do the job, it heats the metal up and it can warp it. It's best to go ahead and hand sand everything on the hood because when you use air tools, you saw that I just used the air tool only to break the bond and I did not use it I did not get out an air file. I did not do any of that. But when you use air tools, it creates heat and it can actually make the problem worse. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. This den here is pretty much done. I can go over that with 80 grit and then 180. That's a done deal. These are all done right here. I'm gonna have to add some more here and I'm probably gonna have to put some glazing putty on this just to feather it out and fill it in and that's done. I still got several hours on this thing. And then we can go ahead and reprime that. The fenders, the door, and of course over there, where's it at? Right there behind that uh, trunk lid is the deck lid. So I've been working on these body parts now for almost a week and a half. Very time consuming job people, but if you want the job done right, this is what you gotta do. I'm gonna ask everybody out there to, uh, Let's see here, are we live still? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna ask everybody out there to um, give me a thumbs up on my videos. Um, that's all I ask. I don't ask for Patreon money. A matter of fact, when I come across a YouTube channel that uh, has Patreon, I block the fuckers, okay? I don't believe in it. Um, I think that's a greedy ass way to make a fucking living is if you have to have a Patreon channel. I don't, I don't agree with that. You don't have my uh, PayPal. I don't ask for money. I don't, if I ask for money, it's in a way that you're gonna get something back in return, like on our Baja. I make special art and, and sell it, okay? I don't ask for nothing for free. I don't believe in that shit. So I am gonna ask you to freely put a thumbs up for me Thumbs up are very important on videos because it puts you higher in the ranking of the videos on the side of this video so people will click on it. That's what I want. So take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, right here, doing body work, finding dance from block sanding, and look what we got, fixing them before I paint it. That little dent that you're looking at right there, if I would have painted that and didn't fix it, and look, I think I got one right here. Matter of fact, I know I do because I, you know, I roughed it up. So I'm gonna have to do something with that. But if I would have painted that, that would have looked like a fucking dent that big. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you how to do stuff and letting you know that it's easier 
than what it looks like. A lot of people say, hey, you make it look easy. All right, it is easy because you're learning from my mistakes and I'm showing you how to do it the right way because I've already fucked up. I've already twisted it around. I've already got pissed off and hollered and screamed and had to go through the whole scenario. You're the one that's learning the easy way. I'm the one that had to learn the hard way. Take it easy, people. Take it easy.